My name is Chris Delgado and I'm a fellow at the World Resources Institute. My name is Christine Negra and I'm a senior research fellow with the Eco Agriculture Partners Organization right here in Washington, D.C. Climate change is really happening and it's affecting agriculture as a natural resource sector more than any other sector and will continue to do so and we have to worry about it. So more and more I think people who are working in the development arena are recognizing that you can't operate without being concerned about climate change. So obviously the, the key piece there is that most of the areas of the world either already are experiencing some severe impacts from climate change or as you start to look at the projections are going to experience some significant changes. In some cases that may be uh, a change in the entire regime going forward of the climate. In other cases it may just be a real significant change in variability of the different kinds of systems that are coming through and the way that, that different areas are being affected. So it's not really going to be business as usual going forward. So development professionals along with everybody else do have to take that under consideration. If you want to know why policymakers should address landscapes, it's because many of the problems that have to be addressed to make agriculture and the livelihoods of poor people in developing countries more resilient to climate change really require solutions that go beyond the borders of individual farms. One of the most important things that, that we see in examples around the world is moving towards a more whole of government approach. So a case where um, instead of individual ministries operating in silos, operating with very separated mandates, starting to think about an integrated landscape that's representing the integrated government. They have to uh, affect what happens up the slope and down the slope and near the river and far from the river. Those are what landscapes are and landscape approaches involve solutions that are better for everyone but have to be done at the same time by large numbers of stakeholders. Well one of the things they have to worry about is that food systems for example don't begin with the farm and then go to the fork. They begin with the management of soil and water which carries over across years and either gets better over years or worse over years. It rarely stays the same over years. And so a landscape approach is vital to helping manage these increasingly scarce resources in a way that allows us to produce lots of things. So one of the things that's really um, emerging right now, uh, you know, we've talked about the Global Alliance for Climate Smart Agriculture is emerging, and some of the partners in that alliance have been doing things like building a source book on climate smart agriculture. And I think as a, as a, as a beginning resource and one that's going to evolve as we gain experience, as we learn what's going on in different regions of the world, um, those kinds of source books, especially as they get updated, as they get made more practical through practical experience, on the ground I think is going to be a very important piece and I'm glad to see that the Alliance is kind of staking some terrain there to, to build that resource and I hope that they continue to kind of expand on that work going forward. We all know that for poor people that in and there are 500 million smallholder farms in the world concentrated in the tropics and on these farms we, we worry very much about their resilience to climate change. These are the people who really have the skin in the game of climate change. They're, they're the ones whose food security and incomes are most affected. To really be of assistance in increasing the resilience of their incomes, improving their incomes through productivity, we, have, we need the kinds of interventions that end up improving their soils and their water control and these have a tremendous co-benefit for mitigation of climate change. It's sequestering carbon. That's the triple win. You're getting that mitigation because you're doing good things for resilience and good things for productivity. It pays for itself over time and it's good for the climate. It's a triple win.